October of 2003, I deployed to Afghanistan to FOB Salerno. And then I deployed again in 2005 to Iraq. I served as a grenadier in an infantry platoon. So I carried around a grenade launcher and you know, we were on the front lines every day doing raids, going out on missions, doing humanitarian work, um, pretty much implementing the counterinsurgency strategy. I served in Iraq in 2003 um, in Nazaria, uh, pretty much as a police force. When I deployed to Iraq, my job was uh, basically translation um, and intelligence analysis. I got sent over to Bosnia in 1998. Um, did about a year over there. It was a peacekeeping mission. And then I went directly to the National Guard. I was an officer in charge of uh, both flight line maintenance at one point and then also uh, backshot maintenance, uh, doing low observable maintenance on the F-22 stealth aircraft. I spent 12 years on active duty and uh, deployed five times in the 2000s. So uh, at the end of all of that, I kind of needed some time to read and reflect and decided that Columbia was the right place for me to do that. There's no other school that I would have gone to. In terms of personal fulfillment and really getting to tap the kinds of communities that really interest me, there's no other place like it. The atmosphere on campus for veterans at Columbia, I think, is fantastic. Every time I'm introduced by anyone in the journalism school, it's, this is Scooby, he's from here. Oh, he, he was a military veteran. Makes me proud, you know. And when someone says, thank you for your service, that's all I need. I came here to listen primarily, to learn from other people, um, but I also felt it was important to uh, bring my own perspective from what I learned overseas and try to uh, help uh, generate some discussion about uh, our, uh, our interactions with uh, both the Iraqis and the Afghans. The conversation that we were able to have last year about what it is to, to bring the military into the classroom in an academic discussion uh, couldn't be had in, in a lot of other classrooms because they just don't have the veterans around to have that conversation. I gave a presentation about my, my deployments in my Civil Wars um, class and I also talked, um, I've talked in a couple of my more terrorism focused courses and, and I, you know, I really enjoy that experience. Generally, my classmates ask really respectful um, and interesting questions, and they, they bring a new perspective to something that I thought I knew better than anybody else. I was a, you know, a tactical soldier. I kind of lived and breathed and actually experienced the consequential events of the past decade. So going, coming to Columbia, I really wanted to learn, kind of get, gain a strategic sense of what I had been through in terms of U.S. foreign policy, in terms of um, American governance, and how we formulated policy. When I came to the School of Social Work, my goal was to uh, work in domestic violence prevention, but I felt called and drawn back to kind of stay connected to the military community and specifically to the needs of the military and veteran community, which at this time are, are very high as we have large numbers of troops coming home. Would I recommend coming to Columbia for a vet? Of course I would. And I think the 499 other vets on campus would probably recommend the school too. It's a time to be able to look back on our service and really kind of reflect on what it is that we did and why we did it and gain perspective. And that I think is invaluable. MILVETS is a really amazing uh, way for military members to connect across services, across ranks, across experiences and occupations, and for us to come together by a shared, um, shared love of the military culture and a, and a shared um, understanding of, of what it means to be a part of a, a military family uh, and a brotherhood or a sisterhood. They're really good at connecting military veterans with alumni and job opportunities that are out there. What it means to be a mill vet is to really take care of our own. Every single time that we've had an issue like uh, the grandfather clause for the GI Bill, we've all rose up as a community together and, and have lobbied for each other. We're a support group, but we're also um, a group that uh, does things. Um, we are participating in a suicide prevention walk, and there have been a number of initiatives to help other veterans in our community to get jobs or to um, understand what resources are out there for them. The Columbia Military Veterans Club actually hosted a ball at Lowe Library this past year. And our, one of our expressed goals and purposes 
was to include the entire community. And that was a very successful ball, and it really allowed our fellow students to kind of see what the military is all about, to kind of experience some of the traditions. The Veterans Day Parade and the Veterans Day Float that Columbia sponsors uh, here in New York City was a great opportunity to really let people know what the veterans are doing here at Columbia and how we are really trying to do something for the rest of the veteran community. The Lady Mill Vets is kind of a subset and we just get together and talk to each other. Um, it's, you know, the military is predominantly male and, and so um, coming to Columbia, the Mill Vets are also predominantly male. So being able to kind of sit down and talk to the other female veterans is a nice experience. Um, we're all brothers and sisters in the military, but the sisters have kind of a, a greater insight on the things that we've gone through. When I tell people back from back home or people from the military that we have a veterans group here, they are just so surprised, but also just so excited that, um, that this exists and that there is a way to ease the transition uh, from leaving the military, which is often uh, cited. Um, it's, it's pretty well known that it's a difficult, a difficult thing for many people um, to transition out of the military and into civilian life. The changes to ROTC at Columbia, which are amazing since last year, we've been praised by Admiral Mullen and a whole bunch of other people saying Columbia is really spearheading the re-engagement with the military. What I see here very quickly, obviously, at Columbia is a tremendous support for military veterans. And I believe that investment on the part of America and Columbia specifically will be paid back tenfold at least over the course of the next decade. ROTC cadets, we held the first flag raising ceremony on Columbia's campus after 40 something years. And, and from us being be able to do that, not just as ROTC cadets, but also being backed by the veteran population, made a huge difference. Had I known that this organization existed while I was making my decision to come to Columbia, I would have chosen Columbia specifically for this reason. Columbia has done a great job in instilling that notion of service, no matter what you do in life, that you should always serve and, and try to do what's right and do what's best for your community. Having a sense of what, where I wanted to be and what I wanted to do um, and having that great support system to kind of get me the resources I needed has been so key in making this a good experience. I'm interested in working in consulting or with the federal government, sort of expanding my expertise in the Middle East. After finishing Columbia, I'm going to go to Rutgers uh, to pursue an MFA in poetry. The dream is to hopefully get into sports journalism one day. I will be heading down to Washington, D.C. to work for the Department of Health and Human Services. I want to kind of work in the private sector and kind of experience that. And then I, I definitely by no means think that my career in serving in some capacity is over with. My plan is to go back in, into the military. I love my job. I miss my job. And the idea that I can take a different perspective back into the military is also going to be key at, to be an, a successful leader in, in the Army, and I think that that's my life.